Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z Flashback, a series of explorations of the 150 games that make up Atari Flashback Classics for Nintendo Switch. Today's game is Real Sports Soccer for the Atari 5200. This was a 1982 release from Atari, and yet another Real Sports game. Now, in contrast to the very simple Real Sports Soccer on Atari 2600, the 5200 version features more realistic gameplay, incorporating many more of the real life rules of soccer including a variety of penalty plays, so it's got throw-ins, corner kicks, goal kicks and the like. It also makes use of the Atari 5200's keypad for more flexibility and control by allowing you to pick the player you control or choose the type of kick you want to make. Real Sports Soccer on the 5200 likely suffered a little from the relative lack of popularity of soccer in the United States, but it offers probably the best soccer game on home consoles from the period outside of the Intellivision's well-known and well-loved NASL soccer. So, let's go play Real Sports Soccer for the Atari 5200. Okay, welcome back once again to Atari Flashback Classics, where today we're looking at Real Sports Soccer for the Atari 5200. Now, I had a good time with Real Sports Soccer for the 2600 last time. Um, 5200 version I'm not super familiar with. I have a feeling this is similar to a soccer game um, that we had on the Atari 8-bit back in the day, but, uh, I mean, I didn't spend a lot of time playing that either. As someone who's not a huge fan of sports and sports games generally it's not something i made a particular priority in my gaming life at the time uh, but well that's what this series is all about so let's take a look at the manual real sports soccer have we got a story again we have and it's different to the 2600 one all right here we go the game's all tied up visitors won home team won the attackers are on the threshold of your goal and it looks like they'll score the winning point unless you see your chance, steal the ball and reverse the play. With brilliant footwork, you dribble the ball into the opponent's goal area. A defensive back moves in to intercept, but you feint to one side and pass the ball to a teammate. Now to reposition for a try at the goal on the return pass. The goalie anticipates the manoeuvre and runs up to cover the goal, starting a rumble of excitement in the stands. Tension builds. You expect nothing more than a ground pass from your teammate, but soccer is a game of surprises. As defensive backs move in to tackle the ball, your teammate suddenly backs off and lofts it high over their heads, catching the defenders completely off guard. The crowd's on its feet now, the rumble crescendos to a roar. This is it, your beautiful once in a lifetime moment. Lifetime. High into the air you jump, your body arching back as you lift your head to track the oncoming ball. For an instant you seem to hover in the air, then suddenly jackknife forward, smack the ball perfectly with your forehead and send it hurtling towards the goal. The goalie dies for it. He misses. The crowd screaming wildly, out of control, breaking through the police barrier. Fans stream onto the field and lift you onto their shoulders. You're a hero. You scored the winning goal. Okay, right. So, much like um, the 2600 version, you can play this by yourself or against the computer. There's also a demo mode in this as well, where you can make two computer players play against themselves, which is nice. Um, your object is score points by manoeuvring the ball past your opponents and into their goal. Okay, so unlike um, Atari 2600 Real Sports Soccer, where you had three players per team, on this one you have five players, four fielders and a goalie or goalkeeper. Uh, so in this one, there's no sort of simulating additional members on your team by running off the side of the screen. Uh, you've actually just got five people on the pitch, so it's five-a-side soccer, basically. Uh, home team players wear blue shirts, visitors wear red. Colours may vary with your television control settings. The team in possession of the ball is the attacking team. Yes, we know all this. The computer controls all goalie moves, so you don't have to worry about um, doing the goalie. You just have to yell at them when they get it wrong. Um, now, this is one of the few games you can actually play with the Atari 5200 trackball as well, um, which makes it quite reminiscent of the original Atari soccer game for the arcades that we saw right back at the very beginning of this series. Um, but most people would have probably been playing this with the uh, Atari 5200 controller. So, uh, how does the controls work? Right, here we are. So, for your convenience, two keypad overlays are included with this game. Uh, so, you can use the red buttons on either side of your controller as follows. The bottom button does a ground kick and the top button does a lofted kick into the air or throw in. Uh, and then the buttons on the keypad, you'll see the top three buttons uh, allow you to uh, choose between a low, medium and high kick. Uh, and also change options or switch players. 
These four keys set different types of kicks which are triggered by pressing the top red controller button. A key remains set until another key is pressed. If you do not select a kick key, your fielder kicks a medium high ball when you press the top red button. Okay, so the bottom button is always... The bottom button is always a ground kick. And the top button is what you select using those buttons on the keypad. Oh, that's interesting. It actually has analog control as well. Now, quite a fair deal has been made over the years of the fact that the Atari 5200 actually genuinely had an analog controller, albeit a non-centering one. Um, but this is the first time I've seen it actually acknowledged in the manual that uh, the controller is analog. The further you push it in one direction, the faster your player will move. Um, that's not something you, you saw acknowledged a lot. So that's, that's quite interesting. Okay, I think we've probably got the idea. So, let's have a go. So, Real Sports Soccer, Atari 5200. Copyright 1982. Right, uh, so we use the Select Option and Change Option function to change. So, Select Option switches between number of players, uh, how long per half, and the level the computer's playing at. So, we start with one player... Oh, wow, you can play all the way up to like a, a full-length football game if you want to. 45 minutes per half. But we'll just do five minutes per half with the computer on beginner level to begin with. Uh, that should give us an idea to, to get started at least. Actually, before we do that, uh, I'm just going to check the control assignments in this. So in this case... Uh, ground kick is assigned to the left trigger on the Nintendo Switch controller to distinguish it from the lofted kick control, uh, which is the B button. So again, you can reassign all these if you want to. And um, in fact, you'll see it's actually automatically assigned some of those buttons for you. So you can set yourself up for a low kick by pressing uh, the right trigger, uh, a medium kick with the left bumper and the high kick with the right bumper. Okay, let's do it. Right, so I am the guy in the purple. And we are shooting to the right. Again, a bit like um, a bit like real sports football on the Atari 5200. This is a much slower paced game. Oh, I should actually press the correct button, shouldn't I? There we go. Oh, no. <laughs> I had the perfect chance there and I blew it because I didn't know what the buttons were. Right, so we've got a, a corner kick here, I think. Let's go for a ground kick into the goal. You may recall from past 5200 games on this collection that the emulation of the Pokey sound chip in the 5200 games um, of this collection is a bit dodgy for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why, because the Pokey emulation on all the arcade games is great, but on all the 5200 games, it's um, weirdly out of tune. Oh, he's cleared it down the pitch. I, I... Switch player. Okay, that's what we need. We should have actually assigned that to a button, I think. In fact, I'm going to do that because that will make life a little bit easier. Uh, so, controls. Switch player. I'm going to set that to Y. There we are. That will make life a little bit easier when trying to retrieve the ball. Go for a low kick. Oh, not quite enough to get over the goalie's head. Yep, 
Yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure this is the same soccer game that uh, we had in our collection of Atari 8-bit games. I don't know if that was actually a, an official release for the Atari 8-bit or if it was one of those many, many prototypes um, that managed to find their way out into the wild through the magic of piracy. You know what? I think this this does have a uh, a wraparound system like the um like the twenty six hundred version does. It's just a lot more subtle about it, in that you don't immediately reappear on the other side of the screen, but you do you do actually reappear. So yeah, that is that is basically simulating having more players on screen than the fifty two hundred is actually able to uh, display. That makes sense. All right, you pass to him. Nice, is he done? And you tonk it over the goalie's head, that's the wrong button. Yeah, this is a very different experience to Real Sports Soccer for the 2600. Not necessarily inferior. Um, I do like the inherently ridiculous nature of, of the 2600 version. Lovely. I do like the inherently ridiculous nature of the 2600 version. This does feel a bit more like a, a, a game of, of real soccer. It's, it's still got that certain sort of video game feel to it. Um, and the beginner level computer opponent is not very good. <laughs> As we can see, hoofing a medium kick over his head appears to be working every time at the moment. And passing seems to be largely unnecessary, given how slowly they all move. So again, if we just... Doink! I think we're going to have to try again at a higher difficulty level. We'll do that at half time. We don't need to play a whole game of beginner level, I don't think. Because apparently, even I'm better than that, so. Uh, oh, half time. All right, okay, let's reset. Uh, and. So. Change up. Oh, no. Wrong. One player. Computer play level. Let's go for intermediate. See what a difference that makes. Uh, and again, five minutes per half. Off we go. Right, again, I'm playing the uh, purple and green team. Oh, much more aggressive, much more aggressive, much more likely to take the ball off me. Yeah, this this feels like it's going to put up a lot more of a fight. Which is good. Can we still hoof it over the goalie's head though? Oh no, not like that, we can't. There seem to be times when um, you're kind of limited in how far across the pitch you can run. And then other times when you aren't. So I'm not 100% sure what's going on there, but... That's it, you take it. Good lad. Oh, no, it's going out. There's a throw in. 
I like how little the, um... The penalty plays are interrupting the action. Because when you think about the American football games we've played and how stop-start they are, in this, like, the, the goal kicks and the throw-ins and the corner kicks and all that have been almost immediate. Super snappy. You just press the button and you're back into the action. That's exactly how a soccer game should be. I know fans of, fans of American football will be very familiar with the um, the way that the real sport, no pun intended, uh, deliberately stops and starts that way. But for those who aren't so familiar with it, or those who are trying to learn it, those sort of endless timeouts and everything like that or whatever they're called when you when you stop play that's very frustrating and difficult to get to grips with especially if you're accustomed to a sport like soccer which is much more sort of continuous and flowing hit the ball But this is definitely more of a challenge. The computer's not doing a great job of scoring against me, and it does seem rather fond of just kicking it out. Um, go away. But it is definitely putting up more of a fight. And so far, I don't think I like this quite as much as the 2600 version. Uh, ooh, ooh! Lucky save there. So far, I don't like this quite as much as the 2600 version, but it's definitely got... Um, a certain amount of appeal to it. Those who are frustrated with the lack of realism in the 2600 one will probably have a better time with this. While, at the same time those who prefer a sort of very video gamey feel to their soccer will still get something to enjoy here like that like i said that wraparound feature is still there it's just a, a lot less obvious than it was in the uh, in the 2600 version and so it doesn't look quite as ridiculous and therefore to me it's not quite as amusing <laughs> but what can you do Come on, goalie. Good lad. Clear it! Clear it! That's what all the boys who knew how to play football would always say when we were playing football at school. There we are. Alright, on to the second half. We'll play to the end of this match and then uh, call it a day. Right, us to kick off. Kick! That was... Uh, Dumb. Pretty dumb. Pretty dumb, we'll call that. Ooh. Over the goalie's head. Donk! So that strategy still works. I say strategy. I believe that's probably breaking some core cool rules of real football, but you know what? I don't care. Fuck real football. Video game football is much better. Nicely done, sir. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, it all worked out nicely, though. That didn't. Because I pressed the wrong button. Get the ball. Get the ball. My goalie is invincible. <laughs> That's 
against the stuff. Right now, nice medium kick. Over his head and into the goal. Nice. I think I've nailed this. <laughs> I like the slower pace, actually, much like um, much like real sports football on the 5200 felt better at the slower pace. This this kind of well, I, don't, I, I don't know if I want to use the word better because it's different. It provides a, a, a different feel to the game because that's not how you allow a goalie to take a goal kick, is it? Yeah, whereas real sports uh, American football for the 2600 just ran too fast for you to be able to figure out anything that was going on on the screen. Because real sports soccer for the 2600 is so simplistic, um, it actually works at the highest speed. Oh, no. Oh, no, it's all going wrong. Yeah, it actually it actually works better at the highest speed. Whereas uh, this, because the the sort of fundamental structure and feel of the game is is quite different. It didn't feel so much like it needed the slow pace to be playable. What? Egypt. And so in this case, the, the slower pace actually just makes makes the game feel different, not necessarily better. That was the wrong button. I think those times when I'm sort of struggling to move on the on the vertical plane. I think it's technically because another player is blocking them. Um, it seems like the sort of collision area for the players expands quite heavily outside of their visible sprite, so... In order to get round another player, you have to sort of give them a fairly wide berth from the look of things, so... I guess that's how it works. As with so many of these old games, um, sort of figuring out exactly how the mechanics are implemented and how you can exploit them to your own advantage is uh, the way you really play them. Good lad. Medium kick. Over the goalie's head. Oh no, he saved it for once. I think I kicked it a bit early that time. Happened there. Oh, that's the end. Well, I won. 4-2. Not bad. Not bad at all. And now they all have a bright pink disco party on the field. Or they just do whatever they're doing there. Anyway, yeah, I didn't hate that. Um, I think having a basic understanding of the sport, regardless of whether or not you actually like the sport, um, helps with these games because like my biggest struggle with the uh american football games and to a slightly lesser extent stuff like basketball and things as well is because they don't know the sports very well because they're not a big part of culture here in the uk um i remember sort of occasionally staying up late to watch american football on uh, on channel four with my dad um but that was just like a, a sort of novelty thing it wasn't because we were particularly into it or anything like that and as such i never sort of immersed myself in the whole culture of that sport and and got to know it very well so i, I freely admit that a lot of my reasons for bouncing off the uh, the real sports football for the 2600 in particular is is not having that fundamental understanding and by extension a lot of the reason that i um engage a lot more readily with the two real sports soccer games is because i'm familiar with football and how it works or soccer i should say uh, just to, just for clarity's sake we do just call it football over here as as i'm sure all of you know but yeah yeah those this wasn't a terrible game i think 
as a video game, I prefer the 2600 version, uh, just because of the the faster pace and the more obvious implementation of mechanics like the wraparound feature make it feel more fun. Um, especially if you're playing with friends. But that that was that was a decent game of soccer. That was a decent game of soccer that I felt like I was being challenged. Um, I felt like there were some interesting decisions and choices to make and things that I would have to learn how to do better if I wanted to uh, be able to score more goals over the course of a game. Yeah, that's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. I think that's that's probably one of the better real sports games we've seen so far. Real sports baseball for the 5200 and this one and the 2600 version of soccer have been the definite highlights so far from the real sports series. So, I don't think we've got too many of them left now. Um, let's just have a quick look before we wrap up for today. Uh, we've got the two tennis games and Real Sports Volleyball. And then we're done with Real Sports forever. <laughs> I think there's still a couple more sports games further up the list. But um, it's like a, I think there's another soccer game somewhere. Uh, oh, yeah. There's Super Challenge Baseball, Super Challenge Football, Super Football, Super Baseball. But that's it. Yeah, there's not that many more sports games on here to uh, to worry about. And as I've said a couple of times in the past, I've actually had a, a better experience with these sport ga sports games than I anticipated I was going to. You may be called the dread in my voice when we came to Real Sports Baseball for the first time and uh, I announced that we had finally reached a Real Sports gauntlet. But with some of these, not all of them, but some of these, I've been quite pleasantly surprised in how enjoyable they are as simple early video games and especially if you have a friend to play them with so uh, yeah don't don't count them out particularly the these two that we've looked at over the last couple of episodes real sports soccer for 2600 and 5200 just bust them out with some friends and see how you get on with them you know, i think you might be quite pleasantly surprised anyway let's leave that there for today as always thank you very much for watching and i'll see you again next time <laughs>